Okay, for this video, what we're going to do is launch Python. Uh, we're going to launch something called the Python shell. And the Python shell it shows up as Python idle. So I'm going here to all apps. And then when I go down to my versions of Python, and for this video you can choose either one, but let's say we did Python 3.5. I go to Python 3.5 and then see here where it says idle. This is the Python shell, and this is going to allow us to test various Python functions. So I'll select that, and it launches the Python shell, and away we go. This video is going to be a brief introduction to the Python programming language. This will be the language that we'll be using to develop video games in with a, a set of instructions and objects called Pygames, but this is going to be a brief introduction to Python itself. So, with any luck at this point, you've either got yourself a Raspberry Pi that you can program Python on, or you were able to download Python from python.org and download it onto whatever computer you're running. Um, that's all you'll need to do the things in this demonstration. So the first thing we're going to do, it used to be not that easy a thing to necessarily get a computer to do input and output. So the first thing we're going to do is get our computer to do some output. We're going to get it to output the words, hello world. So computer scientists used to think that it was really funny to pretend that their computers were sentient and capable of communicating on their own. So they would have their computers talk to people, hello world. And I close it with a parenthesis. Now you'll notice when I hit a, the clothing, closing parentheses, it grayed out everything matching it with the parentheses that was before. So, uh, and by that it means it went from here to here and showed you that this ending parentheses here matches up with this parentheses. When I go to the end of this, before I hit enter, a couple of things I want you to notice. One is that the word print is in purple. And the reason for that is print is a Python reserved word, which means we can't use the word print to define something that we want it to mean. Python has uh, already got this word selected and in their libraries, and it means one thing, and it's controlled by Python. So we're going to say print, hello world, and then hit enter. And then boom, we get some blue output. The blue means that it came from Python, and uh, the system is telling us back, hello world. So the other thing to notice here is that I enclose the text in double quotes. There's a double quote here and a double quote here. The double quote is the symbol next to your enter key. You usually hit a shift and then uh, double quote to create double quotes. Anything inside the double quote showed up as green, and what that means is that the computer didn't really care what was inside the double quotes. It just treated it as a text string and really didn't try to do anything else with it. So if it's inside double quotes, the computer's just going to realize that is a string of characters, and beyond that, the computer's not really going to care about processing it very much. So once we've printed out a word, um, in this case, a couple of words. What else can we do? Well, there are things called variables. And what variables are are portions of memory in storage where we store information. So what I'm going to do is create my own variable here. Call it my name. And then you'll notice that it didn't change color to purple like print did. My name is not a Python reserved word. Uh, my name is going to be a variable that I'm going to determine what the contents of are. So I type my name and then equals. Then I'm going to put in Billy Bob Bob Smith, close it up with double quotes, and then I hit enter. All right, well, it doesn't look like Python did anything, but what it did was it took the, the little phrase here, Billy Bob Smith, whatever was enclosed in double quotes, and then it put it inside the variable called my name. So right now there's a variable in Python called my name that contains this text. How can we test this? Well, we could try our print command again. This time I'm going to type in print do an open parentheses, and then type in my name, uh, the same value that I had here, which is the name of our variable. And then I'm going to close it up. Now you'll notice I did not put my name in double quotes, and that's because I don't want it to print the word my name. What I want it to do is return the value that is stored inside the variable. So when I hit enter, Python returns Billy Bob Smith. So we can store values into things called variables, and that's an example of a string of text that we've stored in a variable. Now, what if we had not put um, my name directly inside the parentheses and put it inside quotes? Okay, and then I hit enter. It returns my name not because it's the name of a variable, just because anything you put inside these quotes, uh, it will spew back out to you as output. 
So um, that's basically how we're going to handle strings. Now, um, strings, again, are variables that contain strings of characters. Another thing we can do is do a print statement that kind of combines a couple of things here. I'm going to say print. Then I'm going to hit a comma and put my name. Okay, so uh, again, because I closed up a parentheses, it grayed out everything. Now when I hit enter, it returns my name is, and then this comma let it know, well, I don't, I want to put another item in here, so I don't want to end right away. And then it print the contents of the variable. So that is an example of printing things using both um, strings of characters and a variable. So what else can variables do? Variables can contain numeric data. And that's probably what people are most familiar with with variables. So, for instance, let's say we wanted Python to do some math. I could just type 2 plus 3, hit Enter, and then it returns the value 5. Now, it'll do this with all types of math uh, operations. So 2 times 6, okay, and it returns the number 12. What we can do, though, is store these numbers in a variable. And the reason we would do that is maybe this variable will change uh, throughout the course of the program that we're doing. So I'm going to say... Um, current year equals 2016 and I hit enter again doesn't look like Python did anything but uh, it put 2016 into a variable called current year and then I'm going to say birth year equals uh, let's say we were born in 1970 all right now uh, we can test this we can say print and there we go it gave us our value print And so now we can see that those are stored in those, um, those variable names. Now we can actually do math with this. So we can say um, estimated age. And I'm just going to create a variable called estage equals current year minus birth year. Print estage. Whoops, it didn't like that. Why? I didn't put parentheses around it. Boom, 46. So if we were born in 1970, we would be about 46 years old. All right. Also, you can just put in the math here like this. Current year minus birth year. And then it just returns the results of the math there. So we can store numbers in variables, and then we can use those variables and do math calculations on them. So if we were doing some output here, we could say print my estimated put a comma and an s stage hit enter and it says my estimated age is 46 so again it returned a string of characters we told it to print but then it printed out the contents of a variable so um, that's just a brief example of some of the things that you can do in Python um, you can also put in some other logic. So right now we've been doing simple math calculations. So I'm going to do what's called an if statement. And when, when you're working with computers, what you do is a lot of looping and ifs to see if certain conditions are met. So I'm going to say uh, a little if statement. If s stage, remember s stage was our, our um, estimated age, is greater than 21. Now, I'm going to hit enter, and then you'll notice that Python indented a little bit for me here. So what Python does is when you put this colon here at the end of the if statement, it says, okay, I've got an if statement. What do I do if the if is true? And it indents this. Indentation is very important in Python. Not very important in a lot of other programming languages. But it took me a while to realize uh, what was probably the logic behind this is in other programs, you don't need to indent, and it makes the code very hard to read. Python's making you indent, and that necessarily is making the code much easier to read. So uh, if our estimated age is greater than 21, uh, let's say we print, you can drink now, and close quote, and then I'm going to hit enter, and then backspace, else, print, you are too young to drink.
and go to the end here and hit enter and then I'm going to hit enter again and then when I hit the second enter Python's going to realize I didn't put anything on the, on the previous line and it's going to execute my code so I hit enter and it says you can drink now why because s stage is 46 okay let's st store let's store a different value in s stage um, we'll say s stage is 20 now I'm going to just copy and paste this code again Where did my mouse go? I'm having mouse issues. Okay, here we go. Copy it and then paste it right here. Boom. Now I'm going to hit enter and then it's going to think I'm still typing a command. I'm not. I'll hit enter again and it says you are too young to drink. Okay, so um, based on whether the value of s stage was greater than or less than 21, this if and else statement would produce different output. So that is a brief introduction to some simple um, calculations you can do and, and functionality that you can do within Python and an introduction to the idea of a variable and an if statement. All right, next video in the series, right now what we've been doing is just entering these commands one at a time in something called the Python shell. And the way you get to the Python shell is by going to Python and selecting idle, I-D-L-E, Python idle, and then it brings up the Python shell. This is a way that you can enter commands one at a time and test them out in Python. Typically, that's not the way a computer program is. A computer program is usually a long list of instructions that you've stored in a file. And uh, obviously, we wouldn't want to enter a long list of instructions uh, one line at a time by typing them. So our next video will go on how to create that file and create a program, a simple program in Python.